D-Lo, ay, yeah, clutch. I'm in the clutch, we in the clutch, it's even been clutch. You think that we suck, your dreams are the luck, your ship is just sunk, we turn off a way. Ooh, yeah, see that my face is up in disgust because people talking a mess, but there's nothing to discuss. I'm just being honest, I'm keeping it a bug. Uh huh. We in the clutch! What's going on, Clutch? Squat! What up, what up, what up? It's your boy Duck. It's your boy Ross. And we're in the Clutch. Hey. hey. Back to the gentleman of the visitor that you feel me? We're back with another Mr. Ballin? Yeah, Mr. Ballin. Yeah, it's been a minute since we've checked out yeah, uh, Mr. Ballin's last video. You guys have been asking us for quite some time. Hey, can we check out some more Mr. Ballin? So we here because these videos are the videos that just be having us just shocked. Yeah, like we don't say nothing in, for about fifteen all. minutes. We just right. be like, "What the fuck did we just hear? <laughs> what is going on?" He's and so once again, his narrations are top tier, bro. Top notch, man. It's it's crazy the world we live in now, where YouTubers can create content. To the point where this is something you would see on television. But that's the thing. That's why YouTube is a, such a dope platform because mm -hmm. people can create their own TV shows. Yeah, right. Themselves, produce these, it, all this stuff. These are the type of stuff I'll be watching later at night and be like, God damn, this is a crazy world right. we live in. So let's check this like, out. I didn't man. know that was a real thing. Yeah, man. Sit back, relax, get you a snack or something. Yeah, Should man. be a good one, bro. All right, top three stories that sound fake. Okay, actually real. real. Let's Parsi. do this. Truth is stranger than fiction. Big and today we're gonna look at three stories that demonstrate that. But before we get into today's stories, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've mm -hmm. come to the right channel because that's always a barista at every morning. Also at Starbucks, just so you can give them a severely burnt cup of coffee every morning. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications subscribe so you don't miss any of our weekly All right, let's get into today's stories. Crazy how you find these stories, man. When you Google it, it'd be like, hey, yo, that I really did happen. Wrote it right. He was most, oh boy, man. On February 17th, 2004, shoppers inside of a massive Japanese superstore called Jusco in Wakachi City Jusko. were suddenly aware of a loud commotion. When they went to investigate, they found a thin young woman with a young baby strapped to her chest grappling with an older man. Oh. Initially, onlookers didn't know what to do. They stood there shocked at what they were seeing. Wow. Yeah. That, then the woman yelled out, THIEF! The man she was fighting with okay. was in his late 60s, and he had pinned the woman and her baby up against this bank of ATMs. And the baby? And his fists were clenched like he was holding whatever it was he took from her. Three men from the crowd immediately jumped yeah. into action and wrestled the man off of the woman yeah. and pinned him to the ground and began trying to pull his hands open to take out whatever he had stolen from this woman. But the man would not unclench his fists. And so these three men yelled out to the police that happened to be nearby. They ran over and jumped on top of this guy and handcuffed him. And the man, as he's laying on the ground is yelling out that he did nothing wrong and then onlookers would say he began moaning very strangely before he began violently vomiting before falling unconscious while the police waited for emergency services to show up and take this man to the hospital they were able to open up his fists and discovered the only thing he was clutching was his own bank card that was now bent in three places the wallet he had on him belonged to him and the bags that were lying on the ground all around him only contained some pet supplies that he had recently purchased it did not appear he had actually taken Taken anything from this woman. And speaking of this woman, the police were so caught up in the chaos of the moment they that they hadn't her. even thought to look around for the victim to see if she was okay. So they poked their heads up and start looking around the crowd for this woman, <clears throat> but she's nowhere to be seen. And so they asked the crowd, you know, do we know who she is or where she went? And nobody knew. The police did think it was odd that this woman had walked off without talking to them first, yeah. but they figured if she walked away, then everything must be fine. And so they labeled the incident an attempted robbery and they closed the case. The following day, the older man, who became known as Mr. A by police, died at the hospital as a result of heart failure caused oh. by extreme stress. When the police found out about this, they simply went into the case file, updated it to show the suspect had died, and did not investigate further. But Mr. A's family refused to believe he had just attacked a young woman and her baby. It was completely out of character. He was a gentle retiree who had spent 40 years working for a chemical manufacturer mm, and now was collecting a pension and working part-time as a security guard. He lived with his wife, his children, and his grandchildren, and he lived about a kilometer away from the Jusco where he had gone that day to like get some hamster food for his grandson's hamster. Uh -huh. His family pleaded with police to reopen the case and investigate this woman because she must have done something to start this altercation. The police initially resisted but ultimately conceded and said, okay, we'll check the CCTV camera footage at the Jusco to make sure we didn't miss anything. And what they discovered terrified them. A camera overlooking the ATM bank where this whole scuffle went down 
picked up this woman about five minutes before Mr. A walked into frame. She was standing in a corner just off to the side of the ATMs, and she did appear to have a two-year-old or one-year-old strapped to her chest, and she was just standing there motionless with her back to the corner looking down. And then when Mr. A came into frame, he appeared to pull some money out of the ATM. He had bags all over his arms. He turned around after getting his cash and started walking away. And as soon as he does, the woman in the corner suddenly becomes animated. She lifts her head up and walks straight past him, skimming his chest with her hand as she passed. And right after she did that, it was like Mr. A had a reaction to being touched by her. And he instinctively grabbed her arm and that's when the struggle ensued. And that's when the woman yelled out thief. Although it's clear from the footage that she is the aggressor, not Mr. A. And then at some point, the wow. three men jump out of the crowd. They pull him to the ground, the police show up. And then at some point during this chaotic melee, the woman just stands up and meanders her way into the crowd and disappears. Although the police searched every piece of footage in and around this ATM all around the time of the incident, they never found any footage of this woman entering or exiting the Jusco. It was like Whoa. she just appeared in that corner in order to go after Mr. A and then vanished as soon as it was done. And none of the dozens of witnesses that watched the scuffle take place right in front of them in broad daylight were able to provide any sort of meaningful description of this woman. It was like nobody got a really good look at her. Mm. But after reviewing hours and hours of the CCTV footage, the police did find one instance where this woman for one second looked up at a camera exposing her face. And her face was so unsettling to police that they actually decided not to share the image with the public for Whoa. an entire year. They were scared that if people saw this image, it would scare them from ever going back to Jusco. This is the image of the woman. Hey, yo. As you can see, her face is totally emotionless. Her eyes are blank and downcast. Some have compared her face to a death mask, which is a plaster cast mm -hmm. of a dead person's right. face. Other people have said she doesn't even look human. After seeing the CCTV footage, Mr. A's relatives sued the police for Damn. detaining him and pinning him to right. the ground, despite his obvious medical distress as a result of whatever this woman did to him. Eventually, they did reach a settlement, yeah. but what they really wanted was an explanation for who this woman was. Right. Mm -hmm. But she even after the police smoke. released this strange photo to the public, nobody ever came forward, so she was never identified. And it's unlikely she'll ever be identified because the statute of limitations for this case expired in 2011. Wow. The case, which is now referred to as the Jusko Phantom, is still very famous in Japan, and it remains a popular topic on long internet chat room threads where mm. people exchange this eerie photograph and speculate about who or what killed Mr. A. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. crazy. Wild. Yeesh. She would have caught she would have In 2010, <laughs> Sam Ballard was a 19 year old living in Australia. He was so a college who? student and his 2010 Sam Ballard was a 19 year old living yeah, in Australia. I say, what? He was a college student and a standout rugby player. What? His mother described him as being invincible. One night, Sam and his buddies were over a friend's house having what they called a red wine appreciation night, mm. where they sarcastically pretend to be grown ups by only drinking wine instead of beer. And after hours of drinking <laughs> and joking around, they were standing in the backyard on the oh, patio wow, when they noticed a small slug crawling across the ground. And at some point, one of the boys yelled out, hey, someone should eat that. But no one was taking him seriously and everyone just kind of joked about it. But Sam took it as a challenge and said, you know what, I'll eat the slug. And everyone's like, no way, you're not gonna eat that slug. But them telling him he wasn't gonna do it only egged him on. And so he picked that slug up. Sounds about right. I'll tell you one thing right now, that's not going on in any shindigs that I do in none of my homes. Eat that thing that's crawling over there. That's never came across none of our minds. Yeah. Threw it in his mouth. I wonder and what happens it. to him. And the boys howled with yeah. laughter. They were so impressed. And for the rest of the night, he was the king. The next morning when Sam got up, he noticed a dull ache in his legs. He attributed the pain to his hangover and expected it to clear by the evening. But by the end of the day, the fog of his hangover had gone away, but the pain in his legs had not. The following day when he woke up, the pain was not only still there, it had intensified. And so he told his mother about it. And I shouldn't first be laughing, bro. I, mean, I... I shouldn't be laughing, but it's like, what if you thing, eat a bro? slug, what could possibly go wrong? Insides is just help, police. Insides, what is did just, you do? <laughs> just on fire, bro. I could see Osmosis Jones. Just right Osmosis, now. like I give up. Bro. I, give up I bro. can't. I can't. I need to go find another body. <laughs> Facts, so, dog. Yeah. Concern oh. was that he could be developing multiple sclerosis, something his dad had. Sam was concerned about that too, but he also told her that he had eaten this slug and he was concerned that, you know, maybe this could be some sort of allergic reaction to that. And maybe. his mother said, you know what, you got nothing to worry about with the slug. Nobody gets sick from things like that. 
So they went to the doctor and the mother ain't my mom. If I would have told my mom that I ate something crawling on the ground. For one, we would have already been in the ER. Yeah, bro. My mom we're going to the that. ER, bro. And but, we're probably going to pump my stomach. Yeah. And that's going to suck. <laughs> that's going to suck, bro. Uh, They're they going to probably pump your stomach, bro. You got to get that slug out of you, bro. It's a slug. I'm pretty sure it has some poisonous attributes that we're not bro, supposed to be eating. You know what kind. Humans, bro. Yeah, humans, bro. Multiple sclerosis was very quickly ruled out which was a huge relief to the Ballards. But the doctor said they didn't really have a good reason for why Sam was experiencing this leg pain. Sam brought up the fact that he had eaten this slug and even though his mom didn't think it was a big deal, he was wondering if maybe this could be an allergic reaction. And the doctor said that off the top of their head, they had no idea if the slug had yeah, anything to do with this leg pain. But a couple of days later, the doctor called Sam back and uh -oh. said they'd had a chance to do some research and they spoke to their colleagues. And it looks like Sam had something called rat lungworm disease. This is an infection most commonly found in rats that's caused by a parasitic worm that can be passed down to snails and slugs if they eat the rat feces that contains the parasite's larva. Based on Sam's symptoms, which now included persistent dizziness and vomiting, mm -hmm. the doctor informed him that most likely the slug he consumed at that party was a carrier of the parasite. Mm. The doctor informed the Ballards that most people who contract rat lungworm disease do so from eating undercooked or raw snails, and they recover mm -hmm. without incident once the parasite dies. But in very rare cases, cases, the parasite can penetrate the intestine, traverse the nervous system, oh, and then burrow no. itself into the outer lining of the brain, oh. causing patients to suffer from a very rare form of meningitis that can oh, be deadly. No. Sam and his family were told there wasn't much anybody could do to help treat his symptoms, and so all they could really do was just wait to see how severe his case was going to be. And unfortunately, Sam's was extremely severe. Oh. Just a few days after his diagnosis, Sam did develop the rare form of meningitis. Wow. And he slipped into a coma for 420 days. Oh. When he finally woke up, Damn. he was paralyzed. He wasn't able to speak oh. and he couldn't eat without a feeding tube. He required care 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But the disease Damn. did not affect his mental faculties. He was just as sharp as ever. One of his best friends, Jimmy Galvin, who was there the night Sam ate the slug, said he went into Sam's room after he came out of this coma and he told Sam how sorry he was that he didn't try to stop him from eating the slug. And although Sam couldn't speak or react in any way, he cried because clearly he had understood what Jimmy had told him. Sam was eventually released from the hospital in a motorized wheelchair three years after being admitted. He would only live another five years before the infection claimed his life. Sam kept a copy of the Dr. Seuss book, Oh, the Places You'll Go, close to him over the eight years following his diagnosis. The book was Dr. Seuss's final salute, offering encouragement, to children wow. as they deal with life's inevitable obstacles. Over the years, as he struggled with his severe disabilities, his friends and family would read from this book, willing him to make the best of the challenges he was facing. And then as his friends and family said their final goodbye at his funeral, the book was read one last time. Damn, man, that's tough. Uh, man, it's like... More of the story. That shit's sad, but dog, he literally... Don't do shit, man. Bro, don't know, bro. And I, I know we live in an era now where everybody's trying to do things to get popular. You don't know what you're dealing bro, with. Sometimes, dog, man. he, I, I feel for him for his family. Of course, you know what I'm saying. Of course, I, I know. I was, you know, laughing at this the stupidity of it because uh, we gotta be honest, that was stupid. That was that was that was a dumb choice that he made. And this is the world we live in. Sometimes the bad choices you make. It can cost you your life, you know what I'm saying? So if you're having fun with the fellas, ladies, or whatever, you know what I'm saying, have fun, drink responsibly, don't do mm -hmm. anything crazy. You can have a good time without doing stuff like this, bro, because you never know what can happen. Exactly, and you bro. eating a slug, bro, I, that, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it ends up in a situation where that happened to him, bro. So, hey, man. I, life is short, bro. Yeah, life bro. is too short, you know, make man. Make it shorter than what it already is. Yeah, bro. Just it's just be careful out there, y'all. God damn. No slugs. No slugs. Jesus. Whew. Transplant. Let's do this. That one was... Mm. When Conrad Roland was a little kid, he was always on the go. One time when he was at the grocery store with his mother, he leapt out of the cart and ran away from her, and she found him stuck inside of a freezer. 
After that incident, she literally made him wear bells on his shoes when they were out in public so she wow. didn't lose track of him. But by the time Conrad was just four years old, Conrad. he had discovered athletics. And instead of putting his energy into running away from his mom, he focused it exclusively on baseball, basketball, soccer, and tennis. Oh, he was and by the time everything. he was 11 years old, he was an exceptional all-around athlete. And That's at the cool. time, his school announced they were gonna have the special guest speaker at an assembly, and it turned out to be the Hall of Fame baseball player, Rod Carew. And Conrad Conrad was just blown away. He just could not believe he was in the presence of an actual professional athlete, let alone a guy that had achieved the success Rod Crew had. And so after this assembly, when he got home, it was all Conrad could talk about, was just how incredible Mr. Carew was and how he, Conrad, was gonna be a professional athlete just like Mr. Carew. For many kids, this would just be a phase. They'd be really invested in sports, and then their interests would go somewhere else Sometimes. and they'd kind of forget about it and it would not mm -hmm. be their life calling anymore. But for Conrad, the impression Rod Crew left on him was so profound that he never wavered. He really did dedicate himself to becoming a professional athlete and he would be successful. Albeit in a different sport, mm. he became a professional football player in the NFL. Okay. And in 2012, Conrad started nearly every game for the New York Jets at tight end. Hey. It was like his professional career was going off without a hitch. But in 2013, he injured his knee, which sidelined him for about two years. And even though he diligently rehabbed and got back to full strength, the teams were not really ready to take a flyer on him because yeah. they were worried his knee would just give out again. Yep. He continued to train extremely hard in hopes of landing another contract, but his playing career was starting to look bleak. During the 2016 offseason, Conrad was back home in California visiting his family. One night, as his mother, Mary, was making dinner, Conrad was sitting at the table filling out his driver's license renewal form. And when he got to the section where it asked him if he wanted to be an organ donor, he stopped and he asked his mother, you know, are you an organ donor? And she would say, yeah, I am. And so Conrad said, okay, then I will be too. And he checked the box. And Mary remembers thinking, gosh, I really hope it never comes to that. A few months later, Conrad was working out in a local gym, getting ready for the next season, when he developed a sudden and severely painful headache. He tried oh. to keep working out, but he just could not do it. So he stepped aside and he called his mom and he told her that he felt this weird click in his head. And then he felt this blinding pain behind his left eye. Ooh. His mother told him he needed to go to the hospital right away. Yeah. And so that day, Conrad went over to the UCLA Medical center where they quickly diagnosed him with a brain aneurysm. Oh, a brain aneurysm damn. is the bulging or ballooning of a blood vessel in the brain. If the aneurysm bursts, it's fatal about 50% of the time. And for the people who survive a ruptured aneurysm, most likely they will suffer from significant neurological deficits. After his diagnosis, Conrad remained positive and assured his family he was going to kick this thing's butt. But on December 12th, just four days after he was admitted, Conrad's aneurysm burst and he never regained consciousness. Because Conrad Damn. was an organ donor, the doctors kept his body on life support yeah. and they called the recipients at the top of the donor lists. One of them was a man in his 70s who a year earlier had suffered a massive heart attack and desperately needed a new heart. When he and his wife got the call, they were shaking. They couldn't believe it. His life was about to be saved. They already lived right near Los Angeles, so they mm. hopped in their car and they sped to the UCLA Medical Center and shortly thereafter, news out of the operating room was the transplant had been a success. The man Conrad's heart had just saved was none other than baseball Hall of Famer Rod Carew, Conrad's Whoa. childhood hero that had pushed him to become that's crazy. Dog, what? What? Wow. I'm getting goosebumps, bro. That gave that me goosebumps. That is crazy. A professional athlete. Can't tell me that. At first, the families had no idea. But eventually, this incredible link was discovered, and immediately the two families bonded. Today, because Conrad's family only lives 12 miles away from Rod Carew and his family, Conrad's mother was given a standing invitation by the Carews to stop by any time she wanted to listen to her son's heart. So that's gonna do it, guys. Wow. If you found a secret in today's Freaky video, me. let us know in the comments that, what it that, is. That's that was amazing. A, bro. Oh, it's heartfelt, but. Yeah, the fact that's that crazy. that was something that he, he saw someone, he idolized them, wanted to be just like them, like an athlete. And then uh, the unfortunate situation, he just happens like you're a don organ donor. You know what? I'm gonna be one too. And then the fact that the same heart is the kid that idolized, bro. That's that's crazy. That's like that's wow, bro. That's um, it's, it's, it's 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 a sad situation, but he was able to save his 
his idol's Idol's life, the person that he, the reason he's what he is now, he was able to save his life in the end. That's That's crazy. Wow, bro. That last one, that took it for me. (laughs) That took it for me. I see why it was number one. Oh, he man. He was number one. Yeah, bro. Hey, if no. y'all not as shocked as we are from that last bro, story. That's, I don't, I don't. that's crazy, bro. <laughs> oh, man, that's to crazy. Come back yeah, like man. That. That's, rest in peace to Conrad. Uh, rest in peace, man. Uh, that, hey, I'm out shit. On the cool, <laughs> I may want to look into that, too. Being an organ owner, bro. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm <clears> not sure if any of, I think my mom may be one. I'm not sure, but. Well, I'm up to renew my license. So. Yeah, you you never know when it comes to those type of situations, you know, whose life you can save. <clears> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah bro. That's crazy. Wow. That's crazy. But, hey, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Yeah, if y'all enjoyed it, man, yeah. make sure you run up the likes. Let us know if we need to do some. If, hey, we need to do more of these. So, make Thanks. sure y'all comment down below and run up the likes. That way y'all let YouTube know that, hey. These reactions from Mr. Ball and his top notch. Make sure y'all subscribe to his channel and ours as well, because we're almost at a million. So almost there. Hit that subscription before you get out of here. But continue to spread love, be love. In the clutch, we out. Already. If you got a problem, then we got the solutions. And there's no illusion. I made this shit happen. I'm living life lucid. I'm switching my strategies. Now they hate on me because I'm causing casualties. But why are they after me? Deep inside, they know they can't handle half of me.